Illustrator has an overwhelming amount of shortcuts, 233 to be exact. Thankfully, you don't need to know all of them, but some are just essential. And in the long run, they can save you hours of work. So I selected some that, based on my 10 years of experience in Illustrator, I just cannot live without. I'll explain you why they're so important and also show you a few tricks about how I use them. All right, let's go. Groups are one of the most useful features in Illustrator. And while you might think they're just there to organize content, they can actually be used to create some specific visual effects. Some effects and properties in Illustrator are applied different to groups than they are to single objects. Strokes can be moved behind the contents of a group in the appearance panel, creating a single outline to the whole group, instead of one outline for every single object. Similarly, effects like drop shadow, outer glow and inner glow also apply differently to groups, affecting the entire group as a whole. Transparency will also be applied to the group as a whole, instead of every single object within it. But perhaps the reason I use groups the most is to align objects to the artboard. Let's say we have some objects and we want them to be on the center of the artboard. If you try to align them when they are ungrouped, they will just get stacked on top of each other. But if you group them before aligning, the align function will treat the group as a single object, perfectly placing the whole group in the center of the artboard, while not moving the objects within. Then we can just ungroup them if needed. The shortcut for grouping objects is Ctrl G for Windows users and Command G for Mac. For ungrouping, Ctrl Shift G for Windows and Command Shift G for Mac. The alternative way to group and ungroup is to either use the object menu or the right click menu. And to make it easier for you to remember all these shortcuts, I've created this handy dandy sheet with every single shortcut on Illustrator, custom made and digitally handcrafted by yours truly. It's available for Patreon supporters, which you can become for only $2 a month and get access to this and a bunch of other cool exclusive stuff. And since we're talking about aligning objects, this is our next shortcut. Unfortunately, Illustrator doesn't have shortcuts for aligning. Thankfully though, the align commands are available through the object menu, and this means we can assign custom shortcuts to them. And yes, I know you can align using the control bar or the align panel, but all the icons look so familiar, it always takes me a few seconds to find the one I need. And over the course of days, these seconds can stack to hours. So let's create new shortcuts. Go to the edit menu and choose keyboard shortcuts there. In the shortcuts window, change the display shortcuts from tools to menu commands. Then navigate to object and align. Now you can add whatever combination of keys you want. I like to use the F keys because they're usually bound to shortcuts in the window menu and I particularly never use them, so that's fine for me. You don't have to add shortcuts to every single alignment option, but at least add to horizontal center and vertical center. These are the ones you'll be using the most. And don't be afraid to override an existing shortcut if it's something you don't use. You can always restart Illustrator's default shortcuts later if you need. When you're done, press OK and Illustrator will prompt you to save a shortcuts preset. So give it a name and then you're finished. Now, whenever you have objects selected, you can just press the shortcuts you assign and the magic will happen. After a few days of using it, you won't be able to go back ever again. Trust me. But if you want to restore Illustrator's default shortcuts, just open the shortcuts window and choose Illustrator defaults from the drop-down menu. Moving on, we have clipping masks, which are an essential feature in any design workflow. If you're unfamiliar with it, a clipping mask is a way to hide parts of the artwork using a specific shape, which can be anything from something as simple as a rectangle all the way to custom complex shapes. To create a clipping mask, you need to select all the objects you want to clip, as well as the shape that will work as the mask itself. An illustrator will always use the object that is on top of the stack as the mask. After you have everything selected, hit the shortcut Ctrl 7 on Windows or Command 7 on Mac to create the clipping mask, and then you're done. If you want to release the clipping mask, you can use the shortcut Ctrl Alt 7 on Windows or Command Option 7 on Mac. Now, a cool trick to create clipping masks using text. First, outline the text by pressing Ctrl Shift O or Command Shift O on Mac. Then, transform the text into a compound path using the shortcut Ctrl 8 or Command 8 on Mac. A compound path is needed when you want to create a clipping mask with more than one object. Then, just proceed with the clipping process as usual. 
The alternative way to make a clipping mask is to either use the object menu or the right click menu. And to make it easier to change the stack order of your objects, it's essential to make good use of the arrange commands. In Illustrator, objects are displayed following a stack order. If one object is above the other in the layers panel, so it will be on the artboard. To change the stack order, you have two options. You can either drag the objects up or down in the stack through the layers panel, or you can use the arrange commands. There are four of them. The first two are bring forward and send backward. These will move the object up or down in the stack, one layer at a time. To do this, you can hold Ctrl or Command, and then use the close square bracket to move up and the open square bracket to move down. The other two commands are bring to front and send to back. These ones will send the object to the top or to the bottom of the stack. The shortcut is similar, but you must also hold Shift. So Ctrl or Command Shift, close square bracket to bring the object to the top of the stack, and Ctrl or Command Shift open square bracket to send the object to the bottom of the stack. The alternative way to access the arrange commands is to use either the object menu or the right click menu. Sometimes working in Illustrator can get a little repetitive. Sometimes you have to create multiples of the same object or just duplicate something a bunch of times. I get it, it's boring. That's where the transform again command comes in handy. This little known command does a pretty specific task. It repeats on the selected object the last transformation you made. This can be moving, rotating, scaling, duplicating. Let me show you this in action. I'm going to move this object a few pixels to the side. If we now use the transform again command, shortcut Ctrl or Command D, we can see that the action is repeated. And every time we use the command, it repeats it again and again, moving the same amount in the same direction. And it even works if we select a different object. Okay, that's cool, but kinda useless. Let's make it more interesting. Instead of just moving, let's hold the Alt or Option key while dragging the object. Holding Alt creates a duplicate of the object. And now, if we use the Transform Again command, it repeats the entire action, creating a new duplicate every time, always in the same direction. Now we can select the entire row and repeat the process downwards. We drag the first time holding Alt and then press Ctrl D to repeat the action. Quite quickly, we've created a deck of cards. But what if we need to be more precise? Let's try working with rotation. I'm going to create a circle on the artboard using the ellipse tool, shortcut L. Then I'm going to select the rotate tool, shortcut R, hold the Alt or Option key and click once on top of the right anchor point of the circle. By holding Alt and clicking somewhere with the Rotate tool, two things happen. We open the Rotate window so we can precisely input how much we want to rotate, but we also change the reference points of the rotation, from the center of the object to the place where we clicked. Now we can just input a rotation amount, let's say 20 degrees, and instead of clicking OK, we'll click on Copy. This will create a new copy of the object, rotated 20 degrees around the reference point. If we now select the copy and hit Ctrl or Command D, it will repeat this process of copy and rotation. And just like so, we can easily create some very interesting shapes in Illustrator. The possibilities of this command are endless, but it might take some time getting used to. The alternative way to access the transform again command is either through the object menu or the right click menu. Sometimes things can get a little messy in our file. So it's great to have a quick way to preview the things we're creating without all the stuff getting in the way. Thankfully, a few versions ago, Illustrator introduced Trim View and Presentation Mode, two amazing features to preview your work. The bad news? Both of them don't have shortcuts. The good news? You already know how to create them. They're located under the View menu. My keys of choice are F11 for Trim View and F12 for Presentation Mode, but you can choose whatever you want. Let's see how each one works. Trim View simply hides everything that is placed outside of the artboard. Objects are still there, you can still select them, but they are hidden so you have a better picture of how the artwork will look when it is exported. Presentation Mode, on the other hand, actually turns Illustrator in a PowerPoint of sorts. It will make Illustrator go full screen, with the artboard taking up most of the space and hiding the user interface. It also prevents you from selecting anything in the artboard. Clicking anywhere or using the arrow keys will skip to the next artboard. One way I really like to use presentation mode is when I'm too lazy to export a design and send it for review. 
I just press F12 to go to presentation mode, use Windows Capture tool to take a screenshot of the artboard and then just paste it on Discord or any other messaging app. Expanding a vector object in Illustrator is just as useful as it is confusing, especially since we have two similar commands, expand and expand appearance. Let's understand what each one does once and for all. Both commands can be accessed through the object menu, and in a general sense, they do the same thing. They convert appearance attributes, which are literally what the name implies, into objects. You can see an object's attributes through the appearance panel. Each layer on the panel is a different attribute. When you expand the shape, the attributes like strokes, gradients, effects or a blend will be converted to separate objects. And the only difference between the two commands is that expand is used when the object only has basic attributes like fill, stroke and opacity, and the expand appearance is used when the object has other attributes applied to it, such as an envelope distortion, a drop shadow or a distortion effect. For example, let's apply a twist effect on this rectangle. Notice how I can still edit the original rectangle and the twist effect will adjust accordingly. This happens because the effect is applied as an attribute in the appearance panel, and so the original shape is preserved. If we want to convert this effect into an object, or effectively apply this distortion to the rectangle, we can use the expand appearance command. Now, the effect no longer shows up in the appearance panel and we no longer have access to the original shape. It has been converted into its own object, made out of paths and anchor points. We can do a similar thing with strokes. If you have an object that has a stroke, you can convert the stroke into a separate object by using the expand command. Just select stroke in the window that pops up and hit OK. Both these commands don't have default shortcuts, so we gotta create new ones again. My shortcuts of choice for Expand and Expand Appearance are Ctrl Shift 1 and Ctrl Shift 2, respectively. Replace Ctrl for Command if you're a Mac user. At this point, I believe you got it already. If you enjoyed this video, you might also like this one. Check the links in the description to know how you can support the channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave your doubts in the comment section so I can answer them. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Bye!